Hello everyone and welcome to our next video. Today we'll talk about the AVC model of flower development. Essentially this is how the specific floral structures arise and in the particular order we find them. So first we'll take a look at an overhead view of an Arabidopsis thaliana flower. Um, it is, of course, a very commonly studied model plant. Um, this will be the wild type version, and will show the four major floral organs and their relative positions. So on the outside, we have the sepals. These are the green leaf-like structures typically found directly underneath the flower, and they function to protect the flower while it's developing. Next, we have the petals. These, of course, are what give the flowers so much color and are used to attract pollinators, which, of course, will aid in reproduction as they will carry their pollen onto other flowers. Next, we have the stamen. So, uh, most flowers possess both male and female reproductive structures. Stamens are the male reproductive structures and possess pollen. Uh, and then finally in the middle we have the carpels. These are the female reproductive structures and possess the ovaries and developing seeds. Um, the stamens, besides providing pollen for pollinators to carry, can actually be used to self-fertilize um, their own carpels. Now these four structures are found in very specific positions called whorls. So whorls are basically these concentric circles and uh, designate very specific areas of gene expression. Um, so whorls one to four are from the outside sepals to the inside of carpels. Now these three gene classes, A, B, and C, in combination will code for these four different structures. So A, class A genes on their own code for sepals. Class A and B genes together code for petals. Class B and C genes together code for stamen. And class C genes on their own will code for carpels. Uh, now, in this diagram in the bottom right, the whorls are numbered one to four from left to right. So the sepals will be one, petals 2, stamen 3, and carpel 4. Um, and keep in mind this is in a wild type flower. So there's a couple rules associated with the expression of these three gene classes. First of which is that genes from class A are mutually antagonistic with genes from class C. This means that class A genes will oppress the expression of class C genes and vice versa, which results in this clear boundary between the two. The next rule is that while class A and C genes on their own code for structures, class B genes on their own do not. And this means that if B was ever expressed without one of the other two, it would not result in any structures. So next we'll talk about some different mutations, starting with the loss of function of gene class A. A is not present, C will not be repressed, and this means that gene class C will expand its expression to cover all four worlds. What this means is that world 1, which is normally sepal, and world 2, which is normally petal, will now be carpal and stamen respectively because of gene class C and a combination of gene class C and B. Next, we'll talk about a loss of function of gene class C. So similar to the last one, if C isn't present, A is not repressed, and this means that expression of A will expand to cover all four worlds. Now, worlds 3, which is normally the stamen, and worlds 4, which is normally the carpal, will change to petals and sepals respectively, because it's now gene class A and gene classes A plus B. So our last mutation is a loss of function of gene class B. Now this means that 
orals 2 and 3, which normally would be coded for by a combination, are only coded for by A or C on their own. Now this means that oral 2, which is normally petals, will become sepals, and oral 3, which is normally stamen, will become carpal. So just to finish this off with a question, which of the three mutations we discussed will result in a sterile plant, meaning it won't be involved in reproduction as male or female? Um, if you want to, you can put your answer in the comment section, and we'll address it either there or in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked our video, please hit that like button below. Uh, subscribe to our channel if you want more content like this. And if you have any questions or just want to talk to us, leave a comment below. Hope you enjoyed the video, maybe learned something, and we'll see you next time.